Hello and welcome back to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this video we're looking at question two of language paper one and linked down below you've got a copy of the mark scheme, the question paper and the insert that we'll be looking at in detail. This is the top band and what the mark scheme says about question two which is about language analysis. As we go through this video I'm going to be unpacking how you get full marks and focusing on each of those bullet points with the model that we've created. So here we have our question two, and you'll note that we have some bullet points to also guide our annotation and response. I'd just like to flag the final bullet point about sentence forms. I think that can lead us down some blind alleys. and I'm yet to see full mark response that really digs the next level about the use of minor or complex sentences. So instead, I'd really focus on the words and phrases and the language features and techniques that really stand out to describe the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Why not use this opportunity to hit pause and actually spot what features you see in these particular lines? Here is the full marks model. And in the same way, by all means, hit pause if you want to be able to spot for yourself how this signals the description of the Tyrannosaurus Rex to the examiner. I'm going to go into detail in a moment about how that operates to. Now, showing perceptive and detailed understanding of language really means explaining how a writer's choice of language makes us feel something. And as you can see from the swathes of yellow on our screen, we're shown the impact of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, both its scale, its negative qualities, and how intimidating it is through the language choices that have been selected. We're constantly linking back to that focus of the question and we're constantly suggesting, heightening, amplifying. We're using analytical language here because we're really showing we can see why this animal or this focus of our question is a very demonic and scary thing. We're constantly using analytical language, we're littering it in our response because we're really showing the examiner we understand that this text has been crafted in a specific way. When we don't explain, we just state, we are really hindering ourselves to the middle of the mark scheme without much analysis. It's also important to state that I've only really got two fully formed paragraphs in this model answer. And that's because really you're looking at 12 minutes to get this done. And actually, it's not always possible to create a really long model answer. And it's better for us to reap the reward of getting to question four and having a full marks response there. And getting the full marks for question two is a lot more straightforward, as you can see. Now, judicious textual references or details, they don't need to be a huge number. They just need to be examined very closely. As you can see here, we've got a huge amount of repetition of the analysis that I'm using. I'm repeating the verb a few times. I'm looking at a few phrases that will go on to the subject terminology of in a moment. What you're constantly struck by is how to get the most marks, you need to really zoom in on the impact of the words you're choosing and really have something to say about how that fuels your interpretation. I want to draw your attention to the second paragraph. They talk about the littering of similes to accentuate the scale and violence of the creature as illustrated by how it is exposing a fence of teeth like daggers. They then go on to talk about the dagger image as a violent weapon that obviously has quite damaging consequences later on when the smile of the Tyrannosaurus Rex is described as a death grin. By compounding these tiny pieces of evidence in this way, I'm consistently reiterating that I've understood and gleaned the most important pieces of evidence and the model also doesn't relent from showing the impact of some of the subject terminology they are throwing in, in fueling their argument. Let me show you how. So here you can see all the ways in which we're making accurate use of subject terminology. We're thinking about really simple things that you knew in primary school, like a noun or an adjective. And if you don't know where these are, I have videos on these too. If you just type in Miss Hanlon's grammar and noun or adjective, you'll get responses for that also and videos that can equip you. But beyond that, 
you've got a huge amount of detail on how things are personified battle terminology we're being more specific than just saying the use of terminology the use of battle terminology he's a warrior this dinosaur is a terrible warrior he's described as great and evil a great evil god and we can talk about the merciless qualities of this really ominous creature the fact we can use that language is fueling an idea that we really understand what the writer is trying to create here. My suggestion to you is that you really annotate to the death in your reading time the lines that are specific to this question so that when you then get to writing your response, your plan is already mapped around your response. I think it's also really key that you do not try and write four or five short and undeveloped paragraphs but instead really focus on two really meaningful well thought through uh, paragraphs as you can see here where you're inferring and implying what you can with embedded evidence to go best of luck and i'm really keen to hear in the comments how you get on